You are a super busy design partner who leads a team of young designers who grew up using Morfolio Trace. And like thousands of other young designers, when they hit a problem or need some design direction, they send you a multi-page PDF and ask you to mark it up. But you're also still a little new to Morfolio, and no one ever taught you the most efficient way to redline or all the things that can go wrong. Well, never fear. Watch this sample lesson from the Morfolio Trace Accelerator for principals and partners, and you'll become an expert in about 10 minutes. And you might even show those whippersnappers a thing or two. Roll tape. So the first thing we're going to do is go to Morfolio Trace on your iPad and open it up. And before we import anything, we're going to go to the settings menu and you're going to look down here to where it says stack layers and you're going to make sure that that's toggled off. So here it's toggled on and here it's toggled off and we want to toggle that off and I'll show you why in uh, a moment or two. So after making sure that stack layers is toggled off, we're going to go back to the project section of the gallery. And then we're going to go to the plus button to add a new project or start a new project. Then we're going to go and tap on PDF to import that PDF that we're going to mark up. That takes you to a choice of either a file on your on my iPad drive, or we want to go to our iCloud drive in this case. And we'll talk about the importance of cleaning up your iCloud drive in the second part of this video. But for now, let's go to the folder I prepared called Morfolio Accelerator. And let's scroll down until we get to the PDF we want to import. And that's this one here, Pauling House Filing Set. And I'll tap and in comes that PDF. And then the first page of that PDF opens automatically in the workspace. Now with a single page PDF, you can go ahead and begin marking up. But in this case, we know it's a multi-page PDF. And I'll go back to the gallery just for a moment to show you that. And you can see this small number here next to the gallery image shows you the number of pages inside that PDF. So that's quite a, quite a number. And in order to see them all and, to, and figure out which page you want, you're going to want to go up here to the multi-page icon. And you tap that, and you now have two ways to see all of the pages within that PDF. The first is on a page-by-page -page basis that can be scrolled through like this. And the second is on a gridded view of the gallery where you can go through. If you can see them large enough and you can figure out which page is which, you can go through any of these now. And I'm going to look for the one with dimensions on it. And I'll look around here, and I think this is the one I want, the floor plan with dimensions. And now I'll launch that by tapping once to highlight it and a second time to bring it up. And there we have it. Sure enough, we've got our floor plan, and this is the first page that I want to mark up in my PDF. Oh, quick interruption. To get a PDF outline of the steps in this video, see the link in the description below. Now, I'll just quickly show you that again. I used pinch and zoom with two fingers to get to the area I want. But if I ever want to go back to the main sheet, the base layer, I can just tap on that layer here once, and that will bring me back for the overview of that sheet. But I do want to get in here. And so this is a skill we want to develop where you pinch and zoom to get to exactly the place where you want. And I'm going to focus on this bathroom here and specifically on this bathroom door. I want to know if it's actually big enough and I'm going to redline it so that I can work with my team members and ask them for the uh, latest update on that. Now, once I'm in that area of interest, I can go over here to the right side layer menu and tap the new layer icon and that adds a new layer and you saw that come right up and within that layer you have two components you have a paper opacity component which essentially determines the transparency of the tracing paper layer that you just added and in the case of marking up a pdf i like to keep that more or less transparent but you can adjust that to taste and then there's drawing opacity but we won't worry about that right now so i tap anywhere on the screen to get that to go away and now I need to pick the pen I will be using or the pencil. So I tap on the brush icon over here and I see that I've chosen technical pen already and that's good. It's a solid line and I'll choose that. I'll make sure that I'm drawing in the solid line mode versus the dotted line mode or dash line mode or even property line mode. And I'll make sure that I've chosen the right color and the color is here. And by tapping on that, I can make that menu go away. But I can also change that color if I want by tapping on the 
color palette icon. And that gives me a choice of a, a number of default palettes that have come with Morfolio. But I'll tap back out because I do want red and I'm ready to make my first sample mark. And I'll make that anywhere on the page. And here's the scale that determines the size or the thickness of your lines. So you'll go through that until you find the one that you want, the one that has the right level of detail. And once you've found it, stick with it. I think I'm going to stick with this middle one here. And now I can get rid of all these marks by either tapping with two fingers, one at a time, because again, I've already got the size that I want to work with, or I can tap with three fingers to bring those back and show you a second way, which is to tap the back arrow to make those lines go away. So I'm locked and loaded. I've got the pen I want to use and I can begin redlining. Now it's easy enough to begin redlining and this is that dimension I want to check. I want to make sure there's enough clearance here. Three, two is good, but I'll just put in a quick note. Is this good? And I may want to propose a different dimension, but notice that there are no particular, there's no scale on this drawing yet. And I'm not even sure that the drawing came in at scale. So I'm going to go ahead and tap the scale ruler and just test to see. And when that scale ruler comes up, you can see it's a little hard to see, but it's basically in inches and it's more or less the size of a, of a scale ruler in real life, a ruler that you would use in um, elementary school or something like that. So that's not going to work for me. And I don't have to know why that came in that size. We'll show that in the second half of this video. But what I want to do instead is reset this scale. So I will tap this set scale icon up here and up comes this wonderful interface that I can use that you can see these small crosshairs here and I'm going to drag them to a known dimension on the drawing. And I'll pick this five foot dimension here and I'll line that up. And of course, the bigger the dimension you use, the more accurate it'll be, but this will serve our purpose. So I've got those two crosshairs lined up on a five foot long dimension and now I'll simply tap in this numeral dialog box and put in five feet. And you can see the feet there. And I'll tap into the inch box, but of course there are no inches. I can leave it blank or just add zero and then tap anywhere on the screen. All of that stays in there. And I tap now on the green check arrow down below. And you can see it says scale registered. And now when I pull up that scale, that checks out. I can come here. I made a mark by accident, but I can come here and line that scale up and you can see it perfectly aligns with that five feet. I'll enlarge it just a bit more just to show you. And there it is five feet from one side to the other. So now this drawing is in scale. And if I need a scale as part of my red lines, that's my option. Now, if I try to start writing again, notice how my lines are only locked into vertical, horizontal, and maybe a couple of angles. And that's because whenever the scale is present, your lines will be restricted to those dimensions, to those directions. So I'm going to tap back out of the scale and now I can write again. Now I'm finished with that explanation, that red line. And let me just briefly show you the relationship of this new layer to the old layer. So here's the base layer that originally came in. And if you look closely, you'll see a bit of a shadow, a drop shadow around what's the new layer. And watch as I tap the new layer, it'll expand to the dimensions of that drop shadow. And that's because the new layer that I added for this detail is only as big as that drop shadow area. And that's what preserves the resolution of my writing. So I can show that even more dramatically by reducing the opacity even more. And you can see that drop shadow becomes more prominent and it only covers the area of interest. Now I'm about to move to another area of interest. So when I do, I want to make sure to add another layer and we can get into that in more detail in the second half of this video. But for now, let's focus on this and I'll tap new layer and do the same thing. I'll add an area of interest just here where I want to make my next red line. Now this takes a little practice because we now have two areas of interest. We have the first layer that we added that's only covering this area down here. 
and I can again increase the opacity of that layer so you can see the underlying drawing clearly. And then we have the next area that we added and I'll tap that layer once and now we're all the way up there. And again, by pinching and zooming, I can see the outline of that layer. And you can see now that this is developed so you can maintain the crispness and the focus of your writing and your detailing in each of these areas. So now I'll detail the area here and I'll ask again about clearance just to keep this simple. And I'll say, uh, is this enough? And that's it for that note. So I go back and make sure I'm only within that area. I'll double check and tap that first area I was in. And now I'll tap the base sheet. And that's really all I have for this drawing. So now I can go back into the entire PDF and find the next drawing that I'm looking for. And in order to do that, I tap here on the multi-page icon. Back comes my gridded view in the gallery. And now I want to go to the elevation that covers that one bathroom door. And I believe it's page 10. It's a little hard to see because of how small it is, but now I can tap and load page 10 into the workspace. And sure enough, there is my bathroom, the elevation of that bathroom door. So this again is too small to work here. So I'm going to enlarge it. And this is interesting. Notice how when I enlarge it, it perfectly crisp, no matter how big I make it. And that's because the underlying PDF is a vector-based drawing that can be as large as you want and still maintain, up to a point, still maintain a kind of crisp detail. But the um, pixel-based layers that we're adding are not so lucky. So we have to be vigilant about using new layers before we start writing. So now that I'm in my area of interest, I'll tap on the new layer icon and I don't mind the opacity. I'll keep the opacity, but remember you have that option here. I'll tap out of the screen and I'll go to my same pen and I'll circle this. Maybe this time I'll make the pen a little, a little bigger. So I'm sure to get their attention when they're looking at the set in its small size. So I'll go back into that detailed area and now I can reduce that pen size so I can make some more precise writing. And I'll say, check this against plan. And I might even pull a little, as long as I'm within this layer and notice here's that drop shadow, I might as well go off to the side a little bit and make a note about uh, maybe there's a different kind of door we want. Maybe we want to have a uh, multi-pane door of some kind. Uh, different door, I'll ask. And um, I'll wait for my designers to get back with their ideas about that. Now, uh, I think I'm finished with that sheet. I'll go back to the base layer. And that's really all I want to do on that sheet. So I'll go back now to the entire PDF. And my exercise is done. The, the two pages I wanted to affect are now red line, page 10 and page 4. And the next part is how to send that back to the people on my team, okay? So to do that, I'm going to hit the edit button. And that allows me to select just those two pages. Page 1, or I'm sorry, page 4 and page 10. And now down below, I have a share icon. And I'll tap that and up comes the usual ecosystem of exporting pages to different people. And I like that it's a PDF and I like that it's the best quality. So I'll tap share. And notice that it's only exporting two pages, two of two. And they are ready to go now. And I can use all of my usual channels to reach out to people. And I think I'll just reach out to myself this time and throw that in and there I am and I'll call it a test and put that keyboard away and there is my PDF at the bottom of that email waiting to go and I'll hit send and off it goes and of course you're going to go back to the grid when you're finished sending if you want to keep working or you want to go looking at a page by page version of the PDF. And when I'm done with the PDF, I can just tap up here in the upper left and go all the way back to the gallery. 
tap again on the gallery icon and I'm fully back in the gallery and there again is our PDF and the number of pages inside it so I don't lose track of it and can take on the next project now.